Welcome to New Mexico Entertainment, the podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to New Mexico Entertainment, the podcast. I'm Teresa Robinson, publisher and editor-in-chief of New Mexico Entertainment Magazine, and July was our comedy issue. So we got to speak to some great comics here in New Mexico, one of them being one of the hardest working comics that's out there right now, Joshua Fournier. This was an interview that we got to do a few weeks ago, and it turned out to be a lot longer than we anticipated. Um, It was for um, New Mexico Entertainment Television, and what was supposed to be a five-minute interview turned out to be almost a 30-minute interview. So we're taking advantage of our new podcast platform to bring you the full interview. So enjoy. Thank you for taking time out to do this interview, which oh, honestly I should have been interviewing you a, quite a while ago. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all good. So yeah, I think um, yesterday I looked so haggard. It was so bad. We just came back from my grandma's funeral. I was covered in dirt because I dug the hole. I was all puffy eyed. And then you're like, oh, this is going to be on. This, this is people are going to see this. And I was like, yeah. oh, Jesus. Okay, well, can we not do this? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, I'm, just as you were getting on, I was like, and it was on audio for a while, and I was like, I didn't tell them this was for the show. I didn't tell them yeah. this was for a show. So thank you. Thank you for uh, letting us reschedule so we could do it. So I am um, glad to have you on the show. It's the comedy episode so our oh, july issue is the comedy issue and i was like okay i got i gotta get i gotta get josh on so okay. uh, how did it begin with you how did comedy come into your <laughs> verse <laughs> all right so uh I, i've told the story quite a bit but i mean i've always been a fan of comedy you know what i'm saying especially growing up kind of where we grew up you know the rest thing there's not really much to be happy about um and so <laughs> uh you're always making jokes talking shit and being can i cuss on this sorry yes you can <laughs> okay cool, it's that guy's yeah. show don't go crazy yeah. but yes you can <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i'm not gonna start dropping you know saying slurs or nothing but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no is you know uh comedy's just always been i think a part of my life for the longest i can remember like even when i was a kid like when when we left the res we moved to albuquerque and my mom had this boyfriend and he had like a, a stack of, you know, the book of CDs, you know what I mean? I would go and steal CDs from him sometimes because he never noticed. And I stole a, a Kings of Comedy CD. It was like the Kings of Comedy, Bernie Mac, you know, Steve, uh, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and uh, D.L. Hughley. It was, a, and I remember listening to that. I remember listening to like Bernie Mac and be like, whoa, this is insane. Like he's just talking to people a lot. And I was just infatuated with it. Um, and so, you know, as a kid, that was as a kid. And, it just, I don't know, it was, it just, and it just like intrigued me that people could talk and, you know, have just, it just a pull on people. And then obviously as a, you know, as a kid, I was growing up, uh, Dane Cook was like a huge thing. And I remember kids at the back of the bus being like, yo, listen to this. And they would play on the little I, the iPod shuffle loud. And it would just, you know, he would say stuff and it just captivated people. And I was like, that's so weird. Like, that's such a weird thing to me. Um. But, you know, I've just always been a huge fan of comedy. Uh, I would start at, like, buying comedy DVDs from Walmart after that. Um, but the first time I, like, started, started comedy, I was working at a strip club in Farmington, New Mexico. There's which, a strip yeah, club in Farmington, New Mexico? There, there was. It's not there anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, they didn't like it, so they put up a sign outside our club that said, like, Jesus is always watching. And uh, we put up a sign right on our side of the fence that said, if he's watching, you better start tipping. <laughs> and uh yeah i don't think the lord liked that because he sent our building up in flames so oh my God. yeah dude <laughs> um but <laughs> before that uh, like i would get there like i would get the because i was one of the general managers there so i'd get there at, like four o'clock and like have to open up and there would already be like these old men outside waiting like five or six of them and i'm like yo i'm not gonna have girls like six o'clock They're like that's fine we'll wait and so I'll just be in vacuuming and wiping down tables and cleaning and they would just sit there and wait. And I'm like, you guys like want to listen to music or something. And after a while, I was just like, Hey, if I let you guys in this early, I won't try to you. Um, but can I tell some jokes for you? 
because I've been writing these little dumb jokes in it. Because I was listening to like comedy podcasts, you know, like you have to write, write jokes in your book all the time. Like have a notebook and just write down jokes. And I was like, ooh, this is what I have to do. And I would like write down stupid. They were so bad too. <laughs> um, but I remember like the first day, I was, like one of the first days I got on stage, I was like, hey man, I won't charge you guys. You can come in here. Uh, let me tell jokes for you. You don't have to pay a cover. They're like, yeah, okay. Uh, and it was just like six old men. And like after I cleaned the stage, I jumped on stage. I like introduced myself over the mic because I was also DJing too. So I was like, all right, coming up. This I only knew how to do like strip club introductions, you know. <laughs> so I was like sitting behind. I was like, all righty, please welcome up to the stage. Just hottie with a body coming out of the way from the res. Give it up for Josh Fournier. And then they're like five. It's so sad, dude. <laughs> but in my head, I was like, this is what I have to do. And I would like run and with the same mic from behind the curtain onto stage and be like, what's up, everybody? How y'all doing? And I just talked to these guys face to face. And I had to pretend like I've never, I only knew from what I saw on like DVDs and stuff like, what's up, guys? How you doing? How y'all feeling? You doing good? Ah, you know? <laughs> And that's like the first time I got on stage and told, I think maybe like a four minute set. And they were like, ah, but it was like sort of telling jokes to your grandpa. You know what I'm saying? They're going to support and be happy for you regardless, even though the material sucked. Um, but after that, I did it like three or four times after that. They would always come early because like, if we come early, we don't have to pay a cover. We just have to listen to these stupid jokes. Oh my God. <laughs> and so that's they would so like boring. come. Yeah, dude, and they they would these four old dudes, these four or five old guys would come and be like, "Hey, we can just listen to these same stupid jokes and uh, not have to pay cover." And I did that like three or four times, and then after that, I started telling like my buddy who worked at the bar in Farmington, I was like, "Hey, bro, I'm a comedian now. I do comedy." And he's like, "You do comedy?" I was like, "Yeah, dude, I'm actually pretty good. I'm a great comedian." And he's like, "Do you want to like?" do comedy after bands at this honky tonk bar and i was like yeah let's go dude oh my first gig let's go and i feel like these country bands would get off stage they're like all right coming up josh and i would go up and I'm like what's up i work at the strip club and everyone in that town knew that sort of like fuck that club dude and fuck you and yeah they hated me from the jump and i had to like oh, fill time man. in between bands and it was just death every time but i did get good at roasting people because then it just became like fuck you it's like fuck you you just met a band you ah <laughs> you gotta dance you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah so that was my my start in comedy and then i stopped um after a while and folks not, but then the club burnt down and then i had no excuse not to move to albuquerque looked up open mics and just started regularly going to open mics like every night yeah that was the start of it well it was the start of following what you would hear on on you know the cds you would listen to of other comics how did you evolve to the comedy you do now um i think it's that thing people always say you got to find your voice you know obviously you're you're inspired you're influenced by people you look up to um, but I think you really have to find your your voice, and especially me being native, there's not a lot of like native comedians to like mold after, I guess. So mm -hmm. it kind of works out in favor for me. So anything I do regard regarding native stuff is unique to me because we do have like a big native comedy scene, but it's not mainstream. It's we call it the fry bread trail. <laughs> People, yeah. And there's like huge comedians you would you probably have never heard of who are native, but they only do like casino and res shows. But you go to these shows and there's two thousand people, a thousand people sold out, you know. Wow. But you've never heard of these people because they only do like casino shows or like native shows. There's so much money in them, but sometimes you go and sometimes it's it's rough listening. It's some of the it's so specific and niche to like res comedy that I don't even relate to it. You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff where I'm just like, that's not my type of comedy. I respect it. They did their thing. They hustled mm -hmm. and they have an audience, you know, but for me, I, I just couldn't do it. And vice versa. <clears throat> Those same people will come to me and be like, how do you get to like clubs? You know, how do you do like the clubs that you do? And I'm like, just write good material. And they're like, I have these jokes. And like, you tell them. And they're like, I can't. My audience would never allow it. Um I don't know. I, I guess it's just finding your voice and finding, like, you know, becoming comfortable on stage without, you know, being too influenced. Because like, sometimes it still happens to me today. Like, I go up with, like, a Bernie Mac energy or a Bill Burr energy where I'm, like, overly aggressive or mean. Or 
I still say something like, you motherfuckers don't scare me, you know, like if it's a hostile <laughs> room. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, yeah, I'm not scared of you motherfuckers, dude. But I throw a dude into it and it just throws out all street cred. I, I speak like, I've, I've had somebody tell me legit, um, they're like, yo, you do all these head shows, but before I even like knew who you were, I thought you were white. <laughs> I'm like, sup, dude? You know, or like, dude, that's crazy. Wow. Whatever. So, I mean, considering you just talked about that there are some um, native um, com- native comics that are doing these essentially underground shows that many wouldn't have even known about. Is there something with their comedy that differs from yours that you're finding almost a conflict of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't tell those jokes on stage. You were talking about how it was rough. What, what is there that's, that you just would not be doing on a stage that's gotten you to the stages you've gotten to that they haven't? Res humor is so specific to like res life that it just wouldn't translate to mainstream or other audiences. Whereas the kind of comedy that I write, it does have like, a native point of view, but on things that relate to other people. Um, I talk about racism a lot in my joke, and obviously that's yeah. pretty universal. But you tie it into, you know, because a lot of times when I do the road, people have never even seen a native, let alone met one or know what goes on in in in, in our culture or anything like that. So, but to tie that bridge, I do, you know, do the hacky native jokes to kind of bridge that, you know, what I'm saying like. Who in here drinks? Ah, everyone claps. Y'all drinking tonight? Woo! Is it cool as a native? It sees me. It makes me very happy to see you celebrate my culture. Thank you so much for that. And then you're like, oh shit, this guy's stupid, you know. <laughs> but you bridge, you make a connection to these audiences who have never seen that, so they know, like, all right, cool. Or, you know, I'm gonna know Josh Fournier. I know I'm Native American. I know Fournier is not really a woo, woo, woo name. You know, you do like the hacky shit to get people like, ah, he's a fucking Indian. Ah. And then you kind of you establish that before you start getting into like what makes you know being native cool or you know anything that I go through, um, why it can relate to what you know these audiences who don't know anything about res life, who don't know anything about where I come from, or even you know what it's like to be native. Um, but you have to make those connections at the top of your act before you start diving into you know like my set now is like uh, my headlining set. I do the hacky shit up front. And then at the end of it, you know, I talk about my grandma who passed away, but I talk about why uh, being Navajo and, and what our culture is about being matriarchal. And I, you could never make that joke without establishing all the, the hacky stuff first, you know, and bridging that connection. Um, whereas res, res humor is literally just like, you know, I got a hickey behind bashes today. <laughs> like. <laughs> First of all, what's, what's like, bashes? Huh? Yeah, you're like, what's bashes? What? <laughs> you know? You ever run over your res dog on accident and it comes back to life and bites you in the ankle? And people are like, what? You're like, ah, yeah. yeah. Mm. It, it just, there's no connection. There's no, there's no, you know what I'm saying? Like, I went to the pool today and everyone had their swimming outfits, basketball shorts and a basketball tournament shirt. People were like, oh, why, why? But on the res, smashes, dude. Kills. <laughs> kills. Everyone has a has a hickey joke. Everyone has a hot Cheetos joke. Every native has, you know, uh, you hooked up with a cousin on accident joke. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's yeah, it's different. Oh but it crushes and it it does it does the thing. But um, in the rooms, especially the rooms that I do, it's 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 important to kind of bridge that gap of you know connecting to people who would otherwise not connect to me, or all they know are like the hows and the oohs and the alcoholic you know Mm because when i first started i think that was like one of the first questions like who's ever met native what do you guys know about native culture alcoholics is what i got more than anything um so it it, it's fun my goodness so what is the overall goal for you i mean for some people doing comedy is just like i just like being on a stage for you know but what what's your overall career goal when it comes to you i mean I have I have goals. I have like small goals and big goals. Obviously, uh, smaller goals is I want to perform at specific venues. I've done a lot of those this year, this last year especially. Like I want to perform in New York uh, at a real comedy club. I got on the stand. Sweet, awesome. One of the big goals I had was I want to do the comedy store in LA. 
I got to do that and I, you know, smashed and did that. That's a cool little goal. I have specific people I want to open up for, which I've done a lot of those this year. Um, but also, like, on a, as a good end game, I don't know. You know, I just want to do this and make a living doing it, you know. I make money doing this, but, like, it's, it's like, every weekend on, on the road, writing new material. Because, yeah, you're right. Some people, they're literally just in this to get a free beer and hang. It's a hang. It's, it's, they go to these shows and mics and cool. It's the same people. Yay. Yeah. You want to help me? You want to come over to my house this weekend and play check? No, <laughs> oh, fuck it. I go to mics to work. You know what I'm saying? Like if I do an open mic, it's to work on material. It's to, exactly. to shake some sit around. I'm not there to hang out with you. I don't care that you guys are, you know what I'm saying? Starting a croquet, crochet group. That's cool and dope if you want to do that. But I'm not here for that. I'm not trying to be best friends where we're hanging out outside of comedy. Cause on, honestly, in all reality, comedians are weird people you know what i'm saying um and i don't want to be around them more than i have to uh <laughs> you know this you, yeah, you've yeah. been around comedians yeah but you know i was gonna, i was gonna say i mean you've been you've been in the game for a while here in new mexico so have you seen at least an evolution you know some yeah. kind of you know since you've started to now yeah yeah um what when and uh my best friend Zach Beta, he's another comedian, great comedian here out of Albuquerque. Um we started literally like a day apart from each other. Like I started my first time in Albuquerque was at an open mic. Um and Zach was an audience member at that show. The next night, which was on a Tuesday, he got on stage for the first time. And so we literally started like a day apart from each other. My first day here, he was in the audience. Second day, because he was just there to like check it out and see what, you know, what comedy was about. And uh, I was on stage, and he saw me perform. The next night, he started. Um, when we first started, the scene that Albuquerque has now wasn't as established and wasn't as like supportive. I'll give it that they're weird, but they do support each other. That's it's, there's a lot more positivity now than there was when we started. Because when we started. A lot of the cats that were above us were more gatekeepy, I guess, you know. They were really like, Oh, these guys are good, but we don't want them like Well, yeah, they're, cool. they're good. That's when you know it's a threat. It's almost a threat. Yeah. They're they're and good. Then, we gotta keep an eye on them. Me and Zach were looking at these people do these shows and at the time we were like, We wanna do those shows, you know, we wanna do a brewery show, you know, that looks like a lot of fun. There's an audience, it's not just an open mic. You're doing longer times. We want to do that. How do we get on these shows? And they were like, ah, you just got to wait your turn. And they literally told us, like, your card will get called when it gets called, sort of stuff. You wow. know? Yep. And, when it's your time, then you'll get there when it's your time. Yeah, you'll get there when it's your time. And uh, that always kind of sucked for us because we were like, man, we were so hungry and eager and like wanting we the people. Obviously, we looked up the famous comics, but around our city, the comics were like doing stuff like, that's who we have to look up to. And they were kind of like mean and kind of brushed us off, like whatever. And that kind of sucked. And that it was obviously sort of like discouraging in a way. But, you know, l- luckily me and Zach, we literally found each other because he was funny. I was funny. And we kind of just connected towards each other. So every mic, we were just kind of like with each other. And then we started getting good. And people were starting to be like, oh, those guys are stuck up because they just hang out. No, it's not. We're stuck up. I mean, it's like nobody else likes I just, y'all were mean to us and pushed us away. So we just, we started just hanging out with each other, you know? And then uh, I remember, uh, I remember like one time there was, there was, we used to do shows every night, Monday through Friday, except on Thursday. Like Thursday didn't have a show. And me and Zach like looked online at one time. We're like, hey, this little town, Durango, Colorado has an open mic on Thursdays. Um, let's go check it out. Let's go, dr- it's three hours away. Let's go drive up there and, and see what it's about, you know? And we, you know, we both went up to Durango and that little place was like a fucking, it was like a gold mine. It was, their open mics literally had like 80 people in the audience. Wow. And it was insane. We were like, holy shit, it was like a sold out room, you know? And so we started going up there and because we're out of towners, you know, they were like, oh, dude, do longer times, you know? And we started You're like, okay. These, <laughs> yeah, we started smashing these Durango rooms. And then like it got to the point where like they started booking us to do like shows there. Wow. We were doing like videos of like, oh my god, look at this! It's it's sold out here, and we took a couple of comics from Albuquerque, but then like the older guys were like, "Hey, when can we get on these shows with you guys? Can we go along?" And we we're like, "Your time will come." 
<laughs> yeah! so bitter, dude. And I remember specifically Zach, because I, I hate people. I'm going to be real with you. I, I don't like people. I hate people. But Zach, he's such a nice dude because he was like, you know what, dude? And we had like a sit down conversation. He's like, we're getting to the point in our like in our status level of, as comics in the city is like we're becoming the old guys now and he's like we need to make it a point to not be bitter and resentful and hateful and gatekeepy to like the younger comics coming up and he's like because remember how shitty that made us feel we don't want to make these new guys feel like that so you know when we started doing bigger things zach was the one who was like let's you know so we would go to mike's and oh my god and zach was like oh it's so cool you know keep doing it Write this. I like we did that joke. Da, 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 and just be nice. Essentially, just be nice, which is <laughs> such a weird concept. <laughs> well, you know, you know, it's 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 interesting. I mean, you guys took it upon yourselves when you weren't essentially getting that mentorship from those above you who have yeah. been doing it. Just even that whole hey, you know, just give me just a, a moment, like just help me out on yeah. suggestions on how things. And they were just like, no. Like uh, to no, they give were so, back that way is just it's they were awesome. So rude. And then once COVID hit, a lot of those people stopped doing comedy, and and that's I think COVID was like this weeding out of like who's really about this, you know, who's going to keep doing this after this all goes away. And when it went yeah. away, a lot of those older cats who are gatekeeping aren't doing it anymore, which is cool because now it's it's you know uh, the scene is thriving right now, and it's so supportive and. There's a lot of, even now, like, there's a lot of new comics. I don't even know who they are, but the scene is so supportive and it's so like uplifting. And even Zach, same shit. He, when he does his show, he makes it a point to book one of the newer people because, like, his dad, especially, was like, Do you remember, like, how it felt when you got booked? That's how they feel. And don't ever forget that sort of thing. Me, I'm like, Man, fuck it. They can figure out their own way. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, it's so. It. So yeah, what? Are, it's, uh, <laughs> so what do you have coming up that we can check out here in the next couple of months? Um, so I have a website, joshwarney.com. You can go to it. Has all my tour dates. It has some cool stuff. It has my merch linked in there. But I think immediately coming up, um, I have uh this thing called Don't Tell Comedy, which is I don't know when this probably comes out in July. You said? Yeah, it will be the first week of July. All right, so that'll be gone. If in that case, Don't Tell is awesome. Uh, Don't Tell is a great show that's run throughout the country, and it's a secret location where they have dope headliners like me and famous people. And it was on 629, and it was an amazing show. You didn't get to see it, but you should go check out Don't Tell sometimes and see. (laughs) Um, But coming up in July, uh, you know, we got a bunch of stuff coming up, uh, mostly on the road stuff in the city. I I don't really have anything else in the city. I do the road quite a bit, so I'm always somewhere. I think we're back in New York in September. Uh, we're back in August, Austin, Texas in August. So, yeah, August, September, super busy, super full. Um, yeah, we got a lot of cool things coming up. Man, okay, so what piece of advice, now that you, I know you don't like people, but <laughs> what piece of advice <laughs> would you give, you know, the youngsters that are out there right now that see you as a as an influence? What would you um, tell them? I mean, the same thing I always tell them is, you know, like, keep writing. Writing is important, you know. Uh, write a lot, always change you. And people get mad at me, you do the same joke, do it. Yeah, but I'm always writing. You know what I'm saying? I'm always writing those, tweaking them, and getting it to a point. I have over, like, an hour and a half of material. So uh, write. Don't get discouraged. Because in comedy, you're going to get told no a lot. You're going to bomb a lot. And, like, these newer guys have this infatuation with crushing every single time they're on stage. Um, and again, that's sort of like the good and bad thing of having such a supportive scene is that like they're so supportive that they're not critical. Like, dude, that one sucked. You know, and you got to realize that sucked. You know, and you have to realize if you're three years in, four years in, you still suck. You know, it wasn't until like my fifth year where I was like, okay, I'm good. You know, I'm good enough to say I, I'm good. You know, if you're three years in, you still suck. But that's just, that's comedy. You're going to suck. You're going to bomb. You're going to feel like you did good, but really you didn't do good. But like you did. That, <laughs> yeah. That's important because you need to know like that's in a couple of years from now, you're going to look back at that and be like, oh, gross. I thought that was good because I did that. You know, I was doing that my first year. Um, write a lot. Don't get discouraged by bombing. Don't be scared to bomb. Bombing is important for growth. 
especially in comedy and just in life too. You gotta suck, you know. You learn the best lessons when you fail. And comedy, there's a lot of failure. Uh, you fail in front of sold out audiences. You fail in front of your heroes. Um, but that can't discourage you from. Don't be scared to like step out of your comfort zone because a lot of comics around here will do just shows for their friends. Shows. There's a lot of targeted shows here. You know, whether it be gay, LGBT shows, hood shows as they call them, black rooms, uh, essay rooms. You know, in the south, that I do all of those. All right. <laughs> I do the show that Petty goes in the South Valley. I do the shows, the the Buck D shows, you know what I'm saying, that everyone's scared to do. I do the pro you don't think I've been you don't think I've been to the social club down on Central at a at a drag fashion show doing comedy? No. They ripped my fashion, but they were like, You're actually funny. That's good stuff. You're funny. Because <laughs> like you suck. I don't know you'd be here because you dress like a straight man, but I don't know if you're straight, but your comedy was funny. You don't you don't think I'm doing these shows because you have to step out and get in front of people who aren't your people. That's how you you grow, you know? You yeah. have to make comedy's universal. You should be able to make anybody laugh. But a lot of comics are scared. They just want to do their shows. Like they're for their group of people, whoever that may be. Me, I don't have a group of people. There's no red shows here, you know. So I'm I'm getting in <laughs> so where I can't. You're doing you. <laughs> you're doing you. get in where it, yeah, you make everybody laugh, dude. So don't be scared to step out of your quote unquote box i guess you know step out of your comfort zone and perform for people who you wouldn't perform with i've done progressive you know rooms in durango where people have blue hair you know and i've also done republican you don't think i've done rallies oh i've done my rallies gosh. i couldn't even rallies. imagine oh i've done rallies you don't think i've driven a trump train or two huh <laughs> <laughs> but you know at the end of the day laugh. funny's funny man and 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 if you can you could should be able to make the blue haired people laugh you should be able to make the people who don't like the blue haired people laugh you know what i mean it's like, it's funny's funny so i think it, it is very important to step out of your comfort zone um and be in front of new new faces new eyes uh unbiased eyes you know when when you do a a a, a black room you know where you've had three great black comics and then you come on you're like what's up Ooh, you know and you're not you know, you're not what they're used to. But if you can make those people laugh, sweet, you're funny. You can go to the South Valley where it's like, so full, you know, high socks. I wear ankle socks always, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you make those people laugh, it's a good thing. And that's what you should be writing for. It's not writing for specific audiences. You should just be making sure your material crushes. Making sure your material is good enough to where you can take it to those audiences. And you're not changing too much of it, you know, to where you're pandering but you're just bringing your material, how it is. It is what it is. You like it. Cool. If not, sweet. Just move on. Bombed. Um, yeah. So step out of your comfort zone. Yes. Right. Writing is important. <laughs> well, Josh, thank you for taking time out to talk with me today. I greatly appreciate it. Sweet. Thank you so it's much. It's nice to hear this insight. Finally getting to talk to you and <laughs> you about you and your art. So I appreciate yes. the time. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. Um, yeah, I, the entertainment magazine. I think I'm top five. Yeah, I, I didn't even know it was a thing until <laughs> somebody else brought it to me. They're like, "Hey, you're in top five. I was like, "Sweet, is voting still happening?" They're like, "Nah, it's done. It's no, done." No, I was like, you're top five. Oh, cool. All right. Well, so yeah, we'll be announcing everybody on uh, on July 6th at the gala. I think <laughs> I will be there, but I also think I'm at Casala's Comedy Club, so I might not be there. I know. It's like I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I might show up if they're like, oh, you didn't win. I'm going to go back and do a set. Uh, but <laughs> And that's being real. I love it. Thank you for the nomination. Well, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny because I think I think three of the top five are at Casadas because I just found out there's a show on July 6th. And they're not on the show. They're not on the sixth show. They're, they're on oh, okay. the fifth. Yeah. Okay. They're on the fifth. Okay. Because I yeah, was yeah, just yeah, like. Yeah. Okay, this should be interesting. Am I just gonna have to do a live feed? <laughs> the only I'm... one, the only one book that day is me on the sixth. Okay, I'm doing both days, but the other people are on the Friday. Not Although the Saturday. they're good, so we're gonna. Who knows? We're probably gonna have to end up doing a live feed if you are. Because I'll just be like, and here he is. <laughs> here it is. I'll be like, give me five minutes. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to bring the headliner on, and I'll be there anyway. Yes, thank you so much. It's been fun. This is so dope to talk to you, and I appreciate you. Uh, be invested in the comedy scene, especially here in New Mexico, because there are funny people here. Yep. There are people who deserve the spotlight. Um, and 
you know, you're, you're doing your best. And I know it pisses everybody off uh, who don't get nominated. I guess picks, it, it but... just comes, it comes with the, it comes with the territory, but I know, I know why I do what I do. And it's, it should never be seen as a bad thing to highlight the talent we have here. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to keep doing. That's what I'm going to keep doing. As long as you're not highlighting bad talent. If you're highlighting bad talent, then yeah, then it's fine. Yeah, it's like, and see, and, and, and to say out loud that there is bad talent, I think it goes back to what you were saying. I think a lot of people have gone so long being told, oh, you're great, you're great, you're great. They don't have that one person that's just like, no, nah, you got to work on this. No, yeah, you got to you do suck, this. that sucks. You know that so, sucks. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So it's it's yeah. challenging when I'm seeing that and I'm like, oh, even if I say anything, they're going to be like, you don't know. You don't know. You know, I was like, okay, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Man, you keep doing well, you. <laughs> what can you do? But thank anyway, you. Thanks, Josh. I, people are going to be mad regardless. It. People are going to be super upset regardless. I think the dude who won last year, like, doesn't even do comedy anymore. And people are like, that fucking sucks. He didn't. And I was like, oh, well. <laughs> You know, I'm sorry. Man, <laughs> I'm on the road. I don't even know. I, I totally don't even know what to do. But I'm, I, now I know. And I'm like, dude, I hope I win now. Cool. Uh, I can't even campaign because it's over now. So we still yeah, it's over. Too, so. I was like, yep, yep. <laughs> and, and honestly, most of it is just based on work. It's, you know, yeah. we get, we, we go and look and, I mean, it's like you said, funny's funny. And you should be able to resonate that over all audiences, not just one certain set. One specific, yeah. Which is why, which is why you landed in the top five. So there you go. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! I hope I win. I'm gonna go and deny that in uh, in lieu of how they treated Marlon Brando. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, I gotta get off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you so much for having me.